one of the most common questions I am asked when I am talking to uh, somebody who is very keen to understand blockchain and cryptocurrency but doesn't know much yet is when they ask, uh, you know, I have heard that people love blockchain but hate cryptocurrency. What do you think about that? And I think that's a fair question. If it does not come loaded with prejudice and, you know, loaded with an expectation of only one answer, I think it's a fair question. I'll give you a somewhat simplistic answer, but uh, indicative of how things are currently architected. You could think of the blockchain being available in two versions, a private blockchain where the database and technological uh, architecture remains the same as that of any other blockchain, but there is a certain amount of control of it. There is a certain amount of ownership which could be owned by one entity or a CUG, a closed user group of several entities. So this is called a private blockchain. And then there is a public blockchain which nobody owns, anybody can participate in it and contribute their computational power, their governance, their voting to make this paradigm work better. The private blockchain can work without a token. The reason is, what does a token do? A token introduces two fundamental elements to a blockchain. One, it introduces an incentive system for people to participate in the blockchain to begin with. And second, it introduces a governance mechanism. Let's especially look at the former. Suppose there are two banks who are electronically communicating money with each other, transmitting uh, money with each other. This first bank has a huge infrastructure. There are human elements like engineers and then there is computers, there is cloud architecture on one end and likewise on the other end, money is being spent and transacted and if you were to substitute all of this with a public blockchain wherein there is nobody who owns the network or brings in computing power, we still need computing power to run this system, right? So where does that come from? It comes from people who choose to participate in the public blockchain network. And why do they choose to participate in it? Of course, they believe in it, they think this is the right thing to do, but they also have an economic incentive in doing that, right? So the presence of a token which gets created, participated and awarded during authentication of transaction is one of the biggest reason to have cryptocurrency or crypto tokens. The other one is that people who own these tokens or the computational power, let's call them nodes, can then vote with their actions as to how do they want the network to emerge. Now, if you have a centralized system, then there are certain applications. So for example, I believe that interbank transfers could be an interesting application for a private blockchain. And then on the other hand, we have the entire notion of a public blockchain where there is no authority and people can do whatever they want. The moment you say you want a tokenless architecture, what you are talking about is a more private, controlled, centrally administered blockchain. And I think, and forget my, as in I don't want to sound immodest here, but I think that that takes away from a lot of the benefits that the public blockchain brings in. I, let me extend this further. I think that the internet was a tech marvel. E-commerce, cloud computing were tech, technological marvels. Mobile devices, mobile connectivity are technological marvels. Blockchain is not as much of a technological marvel as it is a social marvel. That means uh, it is not so difficult to implement, understand. It is difficult for us to imagine that the world will work in a way where there is no central authority or you don't need to trust a counterparty and can just trust a system called the blockchain. So blockchain is an architecture, it's a platform. Of course, it has to be tech enabled, but the blockchain is an architecture which enables a great, amazing, very empowering and democratized way of existing in society. And a lot of those social benefits, uh, some would say even all of those social benefits, but at least a lot of those social benefits are taken away when you are moving to a private blockchain architecture, right? So yes, you can love the blockchain and hate the cryptocurrency because then you're talking of the private blockchain and you're depriving your company, your country or whatever it has you have influence over, you're depriving that of the many benefits of the public blockchain. Once again, forgive my arrogance, but if you do that, you're going to be left behind. Thanks.